Hello everyone and hello to all the members of the One Wrestling News Facebook group. Welcome to my predictions for WWE Clash of Champions. Pretty much a rebranded version of Night of Champions, but they're calling it Clash of Champions, which pretty idiotic if um you say the least here. Okay. So a lot is going on, of course, in WWE. We have Clash Champions taking place this Sunday night, which is tomorrow at the Thunderdome in Orlando, Florida. The big news out of the world of WWE this week, if you've missed it, uh, this group called Retribution, who's been causing chaos for the past couple of months, and I'm going to try to move my mic up, uh, pretty much... They have just been causing a ruckus all this time at the Performance Center and now at the Thunderdome. Apparently, they decided they're causing so much havoc, let's just put them on the main roster of Raw for what they're, and even SmackDown. So, I don't even know if these guys can be in NXT. That's, that's the whole confusing thing about it, but... Okay, so... Let's hope Retribution doesn't get involved in any of these matches, but I think one of them makes sense where they could get involved, which will go down the line in the card, because every match pretty much is a championship opportunity. Um, one quick note I want to mention, if they were to put Clash of Champions, why isn't Finn Bauer defending the NXT Championship on this card? Uh, you don't have an NXT pay-per-view until November. Why not just feature Finn Bauer? And William Regal could have done that, but no, I, I guess not. Unless maybe I'm missing something because I have not been able to watch anything. I mean, I'm keeping an eye on the main roster. I just haven't had time to watch NXT because of other things, but I, I know what's going on on the main roster at least. Okay, so with that being all said, let's get into it. Nine matches. Um, let's go to our pre-show match first. You have Asuka taking on Selena Vega. Now, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're putting it on the pre-show. This is just... You know how back in the day, in a WWE pay-per-view, they'd have the buy-in match, the dark match? Well, apparently, this is the way it looks. You have Asuka taking on Selena Vega in the supposed dark match that is... Gonna be on YouTube before you have to switch over to WWE Network, but it's kind of corny. I just think Asuka, there's too much to build on Asuka. They have to let her defend. I mean, Selena Vega going on a singles run, I think it's just too soon. I really think it's too soon. And I have a theory. I have a theory that once Selena loses, I think she's going to NXT. There's a possibility she's gonna take on Mia Yim and NXT. Not me and Yim, no. Who's the who's the current champion? Because again, I am I am so behind on NXT. I am so behind. If I look it up right now. Yeah, it's Eo Shirai. Okay. So currently it's Eo Shirai. So Eo Shirai is still champion, which is good. I mean, good for Eo. But down the line I could see it happening. So I'm sorry if I got my names mixed up, because again, I've only been watching Raw and SmackDown, because it's so hard to keep an eye on AEW and then follow up with NXT. That's the thing. So that's why I'm behind. Okay, so Asuka wins. Selena goes to NXT after that. Let's let's only hope, right? So I think I think Selena should be in NXT. That that'd be good for her. Okay. Um. Next up, let's go into I think a match that would make sense to predict first. I think we're just going to go to Raw Tag Team Championship. Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins, and Montez Ford. This past Monday night, there was a triple threat tag team match with uh, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. Well, now it's just the Disciple Murphy. Then you had, in a weird twist, Humberto Carrillo teaming up with Dominic Mysterio and then... Andrade and Angel Garza. So Andrade and Angel Garza won the triple threat. Um, I think down the line at Hell in a Cell, they're pushing for a Seth Rollins-Murphy match. I think it just makes sense in that regard because 
I think they want to turn Murphy into a face hero character again. And I think what they're trying to do is just bury Seth Rollins. The, the writing team just cannot seem to bury Seth Rollins. Because honestly, why is Seth still in WWE now when his wife is still pregnant and Becky Lynch is still expecting the baby by the beginning of next year? You know, when is Seth going to take leave of absence? Because I would at this point during a pandemic, but I guess not. But yeah, Street Profits are going to win because why would you put... This is corny. They've kept this feud for so long with the Street Profits. It's so repetitive. I get the whole Viking Raider thing earlier this year, but, you know, I like the Street Profits, but they need better competition. This is pathetic. You really had to put Umberto Carrillo in a tag, te in a tag team match with Dominic Mysterio? And then you had to just pretty much give us the hint that, oh, Hell in a Cell is in a couple weeks. Let's just tease the Seth Rollins-Murphy feud already. Give me a break. So, yeah, at this point, I honestly just think the Street Profits win. And going down the line, they just need better competition. I mean, the Raw Tag Team division right now is so weak. I mean, who are the Street Profits really going to face? You know, I really do feel bad for them. I like Angelo. I like Montez. They're very funny. I enjoy, you know, the whole party cup entrance now in the Thunderdome. But, you know, I really do feel bad. They need better competition. They really do. So they defend, um, let's see, SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking forward to. Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Lucha. Lucha! Lucha! The Lucha House Party of Kalisto. Now, we don't know who's going to be the tag team partner. Is it going to be Grand Metalik or Lince Dorado? Now, I'm very happy they're finally getting a tag team op match opportunity. Good for them. But honestly, Cesaro and Nakamura are going to keep being dominant. And, you know, I just think that Eventually, they're going to lose the belts, but just not this time around. So, I'm going to give Cesaro and Nakamura the win. They defend. Okay. Moving on. Next up, we are going to go to the women's division. Let's stay in the women's division. That way, I don't get confused. We already picked the pre-show match. So, let's go to the obvious match here. The one that everybody's looking forward to because we know this is what's going to lead up to. Bailey taking on Nikki Cross for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, we know what happened a couple weeks ago on SmackDown where Bailey and Sasha Banks lost the Tag Team Championships to Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler. Now, I have the most sense here to say that Bailey is still going to defend disqualification. Nikki wins because Nikki Cross wins in a DQ because Sasha Banks interferes with the match. She's going to, and I do apologize about my hair. I don't know what's going on with my hair today, but I'm going to say this right now. They're really teasing us with Sasha Banks. I think it goes down where Nikki defend Nikki wins DQ because Sasha's just gonna beat the living you know what out of Bailey. I mean, that's what's gonna happen here. I mean, look look what's gonna happen down the line. They're gonna most likely tease us with a match at Hell in a Cell where Bailey takes on Sasha Banks at a SmackDown Women's Championship. You know. A couple weeks ago, what happened was Sasha had a very good promo about a week ago, I think this was. And what had happened, Sasha cuts this epic promo from the Performance Center. She's saying she wants to get her moment. 
That's how you turn the character into a hero again. You're making the Sasha Banks character into a hero again, which is the right thing to do. If you had a crowd, you had the crowds, you were going on tour, like you normally did pre-pandemic, the audience would build up for it. I would build up for it. I would say, you know what? We like this. Keep Bailey as the heel. Make Sasha as the face. I mean, yeah, it's repetitive. I, I, I get they did that angle a couple years ago where Bailey and Sasha were fighting. But this time it's different. This time I think they're doing a better job with it. So, tease it, you know? I think they're doing this so that way... They make people buy WWE Network now, the new customers. And then what they do is, in a couple weeks in October, with Hell in a Cell, they're going to build up the match for that pay-per-view, where Sasha takes on Bailey. So, I like it. You know, make Nikki Cross win via DQ. Makes complete sense. Yeah, then waste the $9.99. And are we still even having Survivor Series? That's another question I'd like to find out by November. Okay. So, Women's Tag Team Championships. Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler taking on the Riot Squad. We'll be riding to Liv Morgan. I'm happy about this one, I guess, but... Uh, what the heck? Nia Jackson, Shayna win. I mean, they look dominant. They're going to be champions for a long time, I think. You know, they... they they're on the top right now. I mean, who's going to really stop them? All right, so let's move on to undercard matches. I think we're going to go with this one first that's kind of corny. So you have Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, and the returning Sami Zayn. Okay? Now, this is so stupid here, okay? Um, Sami Zayn comes back and claims that he's the champion. We obviously know AJ Styles is you know, due for a rematch. Makes complete sense. He lost the title to Jeff Hardy. Fine. That makes sense. So... I guess the wonderful writing team at WWE thought it was a good idea to have a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Okay. That's Logic 101 right there. 2020, right? So, this, is, this kind of reminds me, and I know I'm going to get a lot of criticism of this, but anybody remembers when CM Punk in 2011? Anybody remember at Money in the Bank 2011 where he won the WWE Championship against John Cena and he took the WWE belt with him? And then for SummerSlam in 2011, they bought CM Punk back because Rey Mysterio won the WWE belt and John Cena got the belt and... You know, it was it was all corny back then. I mean, I really do feel bad that Rey Mysterio fell victim during that whole storyline. But nobody really is the victim here. You don't have a fourth party like Rey Mysterio. So, again, I'm going to get criticized for this, but shouldn't this be built up as the... WWE Undisputed Intercontinental Championship match. I mean, 2011, it was a whole different story when CM Punk and John Cena were fighting for the WWE Undisputed Championship. Anybody remember, even Chris Jericho, anybody remember the WWE Undisputed Championship? Anybody ever remember that? Okay. Let's go to Chris Jericho. He was the first undisputed champion. Okay? All right? So, I am wondering here, what is WWE thinking? You know, 
It's just... I don't get it. I just do not get it that they had Chris Jericho hold two belts, making him an undisputed champion. Yes, because they had to retire the world championship with the WWE championship in 2001. That was the night, December 9th, 2001. Chris Jericho wins the belt. Wins the belts. August 2011. CM Punk. Wins the undisputed WWE Championship. Against John Cena. So. Yeah. We know what happened after. There was a money in the bank cash in Roberto Del Rio. But. I just find it corny to think. And I'm sorry to go on so long about this. But I, I need. I need to literally. Do a Frank Tadero explanation here. I, I need to. Because this is the same way Frank would explain it. In this group. Okay. He normally would. And I'm explaining it to my YouTube audience as well. Is that. This is how corny it has gotten. They're not going to mention the fact that you're going to have an undisputed champion. When clearly. Uh. There really is no need for it, is what I'm trying to say. Why? Why are they making Sami Zayn do this? I, I understand that Sami didn't want to supposedly fight during the height of the COVID pandemic. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a whole lot of sense here. I, I get all that. But you're going to have the belt. In a ladder match. And I think we know who's going to win this. It's quite obvious. It's Jeff Hardy. Alright. Jeff is a professional in ladder matches. Jeff's been doing ladder matches for almost 20 years. 20 to 25 years. He knows. He knows what he's getting himself into. I have a lot of faith that Jeff is going to defend. Alright. Because if Jeff Hardy doesn't defend his belt in a match that he has a lot of professional wrestling experience in. Not just WWE, but we're talking about TN TNA Impact Wrestling, of course. It's pathetic. It really is. How do you not defend your belt in a ladder match? That you know ladder matches very well. You, you fought me so many times. And do I feel bad for AJ Styles? No. Do I feel bad for Sami Zayn? No. Because, uh, this is just a pathetic storyline. They want to fill the middle card part of SmackDown on Fox every Friday. So this is the best thing they can do right now. Ugh. How stupid can you get? Alright, so Jeff Hardy wins. I'm sorry to make it long, but it had to be said and it had to be done. Alright, so let's go into... Bobby Lashley from the Hurt Business taking on Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews getting a rematch. So, um, Bobby's going to defend. He's going to put the full Nelson on Apollo. But then after Bobby Lashley defends the U.S. Championship, you're going to see Retribution come out. And I think they're doing this because down the line, maybe a member of Retribution gets a U.S. Championship shot against Bobby Lashley. I'm thinking that's what that's what this is. And I don't know what's going on here, but are they trying to portray the Hurt Business as, as you know, face characters, heroes? Because that's what I'm noticing lately. Is it possible that maybe, and I might be wrong about this, maybe they're going to put Apollo and Cedric Alexander in the Hurt Business. Because that's what I think is happening here. I mean, it makes logical sense. Oh, make them villains, and then all of a sudden you're going to make them heels. Make them hero. I mean, face characters. Yeah. Make them face characters. Now, okay. I get all that. Oh, my bad. I meant to say Ricochet. Right. Cedric's already in the Hurt Business. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry, because I'm working... I'm working with a loud truck that just passed by me on my streets, so. 
Right. Ricochet's not in the group. That's what I'm thinking of. So, Ricochet, and then you got Apollo Crews not in the Hurt Business. Okay. So, that's what they're aiming this for. Makes a whole lot of sense there. Okay, let's move on to our, uh, I guess, supposed big matches to look forward to in this card. And uh, honestly, right now, I'll just go to the Drew McIntyre Randy Orton match. Now, there was this corny storyline where if Randy Orton was not able to compete because, um, at the moment, we still do not know if Randy Orton's going to be competing against Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. There was a match where Keith Lee might have been able to, I guess, get in. I didn't watch Raw on Monday night, so I'm, anybody can, you know, clarify, I'd appreciate it. But I know it was supposed to be Randy Orton. And the only thing I knew about Raw was the big tag team match. So, McIntyre taking on Orton. I'm going to be completely honest. I think Randy Orton's going to win this time. You know why? Because Orton knows pain very well. Come on, you really think? Yeah, I get McIntyre's been a good champion. But all good things are going to come to an end. I mean, yeah, I, I, I get the whole point of McIntyre being champion since WrestleMania. But, you know... Randy Orton not being champion in WWE in one calendar year? Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. So, yeah, Randy Orton's going to win. And I don't see Drew McIntyre's going to be put in an ambulance. I'm sorry to say it, but that's going to happen here. Okay, last but not least, I think this makes sense here. This is going to make a lot of sense to close out the show with this match. And I'm going to say why. Roman Reigns defending his Universal Championship with Jey Uso. Now, there's a couple of theories that Paul Heyman might turn against Roman Reigns and bring back Brock Lesnar. Which, I could see that happening. There's another theory going around that The Fiend may interfere with this match. Now, someone's going to interfere. Roman's going to win via disqualification. Well, well, Jay's going to win via disqualification. Then Roman keeps the belt. But, remember. Hell in a Cell is coming up. Okay? You got... Oh, okay, never mind. Finn Bauer's taking on Kyle O'Reilly for the... Oh, boy. Kyle O'Reilly from Undisputed Era is going to be... Taking on Finn Bauer next week. Wow. I'll have, to, I'll have to predict that next week. Ooh, boy. Yeah, but um, Hell in a Cell's coming up in a couple weeks in the 25th. So, maybe they're building up a Hell in a Cell match with Roman taking on The Fiend. Which, I guess, makes sense. You know, what else are you supposed to do when you're trying to come up with these storylines during COVID? So... Yeah, you know, that's what's going to end up happening here. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? I mean, <laughs> this is WWE at work. You have one vape review this week, and then you got uh, another one next week. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Next week, I'll be back with my uh, TakeOver 31 predictions, which I'm surprised we're even having a pay-per-view next week. So with that, thank you all for watching. Until the next one, please take care.